Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Saturday, the 10th day of June, year of our Lord, 2023. I do pray this finds you well. Hopefully we'll get some rain tonight. I haven't checked it in a, uh, an hour or so. Uh, it looks like some of the, at first it was a much higher chance. And it seems to be lowering a little bit. There is some rain in the area, which is good. We could share you some right here locally, and we'll pray again for that this evening. Again, you can register your children for Vacation Bible School online. There's a link on the Facebook page, and there's also a link on the YouTube video. When this is uploaded in just a short while, I put the link on there. So, And please register. Uh, there is a limited number of space, and so we'd like you to register uh, sooner rather than later. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Tonight, according to the Daily Lectionary, we turn to Proverbs chapter 8, verses 22 through verse 36, which is the end of the chapter. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of old. Ages ago I was set up, at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there was no depths, I was brought forth, when there was no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. Before he had made the earth with its fields, first with the dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep. When he made firm the skies above. When he established the fountains of the deep. When he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command. When he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him, like a master workman. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the children of man. And now, O sons, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and do not neglect it. Blessed is the one who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting beside my doors. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who fails to find me injures himself. All who hate me love death. And that is the word of the Lord. And a powerful word that is. That is, in the ancient church, right down to this very day, looked at this as describing the second person of the Holy Trinity, Christ our Lord. It became controversial because of a faulty translation. The, the, the portion we began with tonight was the Lord possessed me. And there was a faulty translation. This is going back. 1700, 1600, 1700 years. And uh, the translation took the word possessed, the Hebrew word possessed, and made it created, which that, that's an issue to this day. That's That heresy is called Arianism. And it's denying that the Christ is the eternally begotten Son of the Father. And you see language like that here, very difficult language at times for our brains to wrap around. Remember, we're dealing with God. And God uses language... And it's really that language, because that's how he communicates with us, is still a, sh a shadow of who he is. And there's mystery here. He's outside of time. He created time. So you know, we see even temporal language in a passage like this. It's a little hard to get our head around. But we see that you know he was uh, here's set up. Um, uh, and that means, you know, that, that word, that phrase set up is placed on a throne, established. Now, so you, you can see the second person of the Holy Trinity. Now, one of the great defenders of this passage and elsewhere, that Christ is the eternally begotten Son of the Father, is Athanasius. We read the creed that was, he didn't write that creed that we said last Sunday, uh, but he he uh, um, he is the, uh, uh, is named in his honor. He was such a strong defender of the Trinity. Uh, and again, you know, we, when we think about the Trinity, and the Trinity is important. You, you lose it all if you don't understand the Trinity. And that's a discussion. You can listen to my sermon from last week. I think I talked a little bit about that. 
but uh, um, you, you know, you end up with you know with just a Christ that becomes an example and not a savior. Um, and, and and Athanasius, the great defender of the Trinity, was a great controversy in the church and divided the church greatly. Uh, this false teaching that crept in Arianism, it was called it, basically stated that Jesus was created. There was a time when he did not exist, and that's not what we say. We say that's not what Scripture says. Scripture says he's eternally the God. So Athanasius, the great church father, did it, uh, among others, did this great exhaustive search of Scripture and looked at the Gospel, you know, the Old Testament, uh, um, uh, you know, just like the names of God. This is one of the names of God. There's a there's there is a, uh, a name for God in just about every book of the Old Testament, meaning meaning uh, the second person of the Holy Trinity, Christ, the the, the Messiah. So I mentioned this just recently with wonderful counselor, almighty everlasting God, the latter reigns, wisdom, as we see here. Uh, anyway, uh, there's many, many names for him. Holy, holy one, I'm not going to be able to stop myself. So anyway, we hear that, you know, he, the Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, that there's all, he's always been his possession. Uh, the first of his acts of old, ages ago, I was set up. And again, that's you know, placing him in, uh, uh, establishing him as uh, as the kingdom that will never end. Um, we see that we just had that readings drawn from that very same theme at the ascension, that Jesus is placed on the throne. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to him. Uh, he is the ascension is when he's seated, if you will. That's the when Christ's ultimate reign begins, and there's no no other place to find authority. So that's what this language is referencing. The, 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 it's, uh, what Christ would be. In his ascension. So we hear that he's there at creation, and um, yeah, and we and that's echoed in the Holy Gospel according to Saint John. In the beginning when was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God, and it talks about how there's nothing that you know everything that was created was created through Him. There's nothing that wasn't created through Him. So he's there. Now this makes a beautiful turn at the end here, and, and wisdom is of course a huge theme in Psalm in Proverbs and Solomon's writings, so Ecclesiastes. The song, song is an amazing work. Uh, and what is wisdom? Wisdom is hearing the word of God and, and submitting to it. You know, we can hear it and not submit to it, but to be wise, to be, to, to have godly wisdom, you know, the beginning, uh, uh, the, uh, you know, the beginning of understanding is the fear of the Lord. That's wisdom. And notice what he says here. Okay, now sons, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Remember, that's the that's the ancient word for the Christian church, the way. And now, sons, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep the you know, keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and do not neglect it. It doesn't do us any good if we hear the word and, nah, not so much. I mean, and we do that, that, but we repent. We repent. All these things are going around us, and it really should make you all sad and angry. Let's sin in our anger. It's hard to not to at times, let me tell you. But when you see churches just thumbing their nose on, on God's word, granted there's lots of things that we scratch our heads and like, man, I don't, you know, this is hard to understand. But so much of it is very easy to understand. And we see the destruction in the world around us when we when we don't submit to it. Hello, open your eyes. You know, but that they just they don't hear that instruction. They neglect it. We're warned not to neglect it. There's blessing. God's goodness is in there. Life is in there. That's how this ends. It's a, sort of a kind of a nice punch. Blessed is, blessed is the one. Blessed is the one who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting beside my doors, waiting to hear what the Lord would say. So get your rear end in church tomorrow. Yeah, listen online if you can't make it into church. You know, hear what He has to say. Hear, and if I'm not clear, so tomorrow's going to be though maybe a little bit of advertisement. Uh, that's a horrible thing to say about church. We don't have it. It's not a business. But, okay, granted, last week, Trinity Sunday, long sermon. You no, know, it was a long service anyway. We read the Athanasian Creed. That takes some time. And it was a it was a long sermon, uh, which happens sometimes. And people are very gracious. Uh, tomorrow, very short sermon. Uh, it's Barnabas. Um, there's a lot. I pack a lot in there uh, by God's grace. So, but anyway, so the point is, uh, apart from that, is that if I say something, you're like, what, what does he mean? Here we go. Yeah, I'll try to explain it to you um, and do the best I can. Hopefully, I'll be able to do that. 
I don't know. You know, there's a whole range of what people understand in the church. The same thing when I write. I don't know. Um, I try to. I mean, you don't want to make it so childlike that nobody gets anything out of it. You know, and people think it's just, oh yeah, we've heard all this before. I challenge your hearers and stuff like that. And I do trust that you know quite a bit. So anyway, um, but the point is, you know, you have to come and you have to hear. And my job is to proclaim the word of Christ, to teach. It's one of the big jobs is being a pastor. You have to be able to teach. So, you know, blessed is the one who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting beside my doors. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. Forgiveness. Now, how to look at the world and make sense of it. To have hope in what could be a hopeless world. To have joy, even in the midst of all these dark things. And we are a joyful people. It drives people crazy. That we can be joyful, and we are. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's wrong that it take a little too much delight in it. That, you know, it's stuff in our nose, it's, it's saved, so maybe it's not wrong. Uh, these are the things I think about, you know, like, you know, you know when do you cross a line? You know, like, we mock death as Christians. And I, obviously there's a time and a place where that's appropriate and inappropriate. So we never do this at somebody's deathbed, so, you know, or at a funeral, anything like that. But there's, you know, we can thumb our nose at death. We can make jokes about it because it's been, the, it's the enemy. And that enemy has been vanquished. That enemy has been burst open from the inside by Christ our Lord. For us, it's merely sleep. You know, that's something to be very joyous about. The forgiveness of sins. You know, the forgiveness of sins, knowing that we can have a good conscience as we stand before God because we are washed clean in the blood of Christ. That's something to be joyous about. So we can thumb our nose at Satan. Not making light of our sin. Repenting, of course, but telling, you know, get behind me, Satan, you've got no authority here. You know, go away, you fool, and stuff like that. You know, and always running to Christ, always. Uh, so there's this great blessing, but finally this warning. But he who fails to find me injures himself. All who hate me love death. If you teach anything apart from, and this is Paul in Galatians, if you teach another gospel, you teach another God, you know, it's anathema. And that's devoted to destruction. That's an Old Testament word. Well, the, you know, Paul uses an Old Testament word there to say that, you know, when you worship anything that isn't the living God, it's dead or it leads you to death. It, you know, it's Satan, satanic. And that sounds like strong language in our world. Like, you know, yeah, there, Satan is real and he hates what you're doing here tonight, hates when you come to church, hates when I proclaim the gospel, uh, hates that, you know, I would love that I could talk about anything in church except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I could talk about Jesus, go, you know, the example of what would Jesus do. I could talk about Jesus, your life coach. None of that bothers Satan. But when I start talking about that, you know, you can have joy because you're washed in the blood of Christ, that we can mock death and even Satan himself because Christ has been victorious, has vanquished both of those things. You know, he hates that. He hates that. Uh, and he doesn't want you to be part of that. So, to, so Paul makes that very clear. If there, you come in and preach another gospel, you, know, you are devoted to destruction. You are destined for death. Because you worship something that's dead. You worship an idol, it's a dead thing. There's no life in it. There's only life in the living God. You know, or it's going to lead you to death, in the case of Satan. If he's going to lead you away from Christ, and that, 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 that end is eternal death, eternal separation from God. Whoever finds me finds life. That's wisdom. That's Christ. And obtains favor from the Lord. But he who fails to find me injures himself. What hope do you have? All who hate me love death. A tough word to end on, but it is the word of the Lord. And now let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. In God, the Father, Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father, Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For now you let your servant go in peace, your word has been fulfilled.
My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for faithfulness until the very end. We pray for the renewal of those who are withering in the faith or have fallen away. Pray for receptive hearts and minds to your holy word as we gather tomorrow on the Lord's day. Pray for my brothers in office and your people as we prepare to administer and receive Christ's holy gifts. We ask you to be with those who are crying out to you for healing. For Myron, Dennis, Dave, Don, Ardo, Klaus, Dale, Cecil, Hunter, Jeremy, Marlis, Joe, Phil, Dylan, Jeff, Christy, Brad, Paul, Clint, Beth, Don, Deb, Eric, Tom, Jim, Bob, Josiah, Katie, Heather, Bert, Anita, Dave, D, John, Jason, Camden, Ashley, Scott, Amy, Steve, and all who cry out to you. Place your healing hand upon them. Keep them mindful of your victory over death itself. Be with those who care for them, that they might be your instruments for their well-being. Restore their health, Heavenly Father. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to turn to this beautiful little book again that I've used the last several nights and read this beautiful prayer. It's a general prayer of intercession. O God Almighty and Merciful, let thy fatherly kindness be upon all whom thou hast made. Hear the prayers of all that call upon thee. Open the eyes of them that never pray for themselves. Pity the plight of such as are in misery. Deal mercifully with them that are in darkness. Increase the number and graces of such as fear and serve thee daily. Preserve this land from misfortunes of war this church from all wild and dangerous errors, this people from forgetting thee their Lord and benefactor. Be gracious to all those countries that are made desolate by the sword, famine, pestilence, or persecution. Bless all persons and places to which thy providence has made us debtors. All who have been instrumental to our good by their assistance, advice, example, or writings, and make us, in turn, useful to others. Let none of those that desire our prayers want thy mercy, but defend and comfort and conduct them through to their life's end. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we pray for favorable weather. Heavenly Father, we do ask you to send much-needed moisture to our area, throughout the land, that uh, um, the dry earth with the uh, uh, be again uh, given that much needed rain and the, the crops would be blessed and the farmers who grow them would be blessed. We ask you to bless those who grow crops um, and provide for them as they provide for us. All this again we ask in the precious name of Jesus who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I'm turning to the hymn, I am going to be off the grid for uh, several days, and so you will not see me do uh, my 9 o'clock devotion until early next week. This is hymn 861, Christ Be My Leader. 
Christ be my leader by night as by day. Safe through the darkness, for he is the way. Gladly I follow my future his care. Darkness is daylight when Jesus is there. Christ be my teacher in age as in youth, drifting or doubting, for he is the truth. Grant me to trust him, though shifting as sand. Doubt cannot daunt me, in Jesus I stand. Christ be my Savior in calm as in strife. Death cannot hold me, for he is the life. Nor darkness, nor doubting, nor sin and its stain can touch my salvation. With Jesus I reign. And that's him, age 61. Pleasant rest, my brothers and sisters. Good night.